Alright, let me just do a little rant and raven. Damn, I gotta clean my phone. Um, so, this video is gonna have to be under a half hour, although it was probably gonna be anyway. But, um, so I had an experience recently which annoyed me. Uh, I, I hate just um, having no uh, control over a situation. It, it drives me nuts. And, um, but that, you know, that's part of what makes life interesting is not having everything figured out. But so, um, recently, now I, I've got to make a whole video about this Amazon computer situation. I bought it. I bought a computer in December. I'm going to do a whole video. I'll show y'all everything. <laughs> There's a lot to show you. Just, you know, as a warning, you don't want to, in my opinion, you don't want to spend a lot of money on Amazon because there's no, you know, they, they can literally just take your money and give you nothing and there's nothing you can do about it because when you call up, you're going to get a hold of people on the other side of the world. I'm guessing they're in India or something. They just don't know. They They don't understand what's happening and, you know, they there's not much they can do. <laughs> so, uh, but I bought this computer in December off of Amazon and I'm thinking it's totally legit. I've, I've bought things off of Amazon before. I never had an issue. I get the computer and it's not working right. Nothing is working right. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm thinking, did I do something wrong? And so I messaged the seller. As it turns out, I was buying from a third party seller, this computer shop in Delaware. Uh, called PCOnline.us, I think is what they're called. They do not have a good reputation once you look into them. So, under normal circumstances, I would never buy anything from them because they're they're obviously kind of a, a shit company. But Amazon just uses these third-party sellers that you you don't know what uh, what you're dealing with until you look into it. So, if you're going to buy something like a computer or like a nice mountain bike, anything expensive, you're better off going directly to the manufacturer. It's not like, you know, I should have just went to Lenovo to get the computer because they, it, it's the same, you know, it, it ended up coming through UPS anyway, which is where this rant is, go, is going because UPS has become a complete nightmare too anyway. So I get this computer doesn't work. I messaged the third party seller and now I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even realize I was dealing with a third party sell a seller. I, I just, I didn't put much thought into any of it. So I'm talking to them and I'm like, look, this computer keeps sending me these error messages and this and that. They're like, oh, okay, send it back to us. I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm like, I gotta send, I just got it. You know, I send it back to him. It comes back like a week or two later. It works for about a week. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting there playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I bought this computer because it's it's a gaming computer, but the the reason I bought a gaming computer is because they're more powerful a lot of the times. You know what I mean? So I want to be able to edit videos and photos and all that shit too. So I wanted I wanted as much power as I could get for the price. And so I spent about 1200 bucks and I did get a very powerful as far as spending twelve hundred bucks, you you couldn't get a more powerful computer. I did a bunch of research. I got it's called a Lenovo Lock L O Q. Um, it's like a lower end Lenovo, but it's got a lot of powerful um, stuff in it. <laughs> I'm, like I did learn a lot about co computers just to buy this, but I, I'm not I'm not getting into it. It's got a good processor and all that shit. Anyways, and I wanted an AMD processor. I wanted something that's more efficient. Um, but so, um, yeah, I'm not going to get into the details of why I bought it. Um, anyways, it, it, it works for a week. I'm sitting there playing Red Dead Redemption. And all of a sudden, the computer just clicks off. And there's a click as if something inside it just popped or something. I'm like, what the f I'm like, oh shit. <clears throat> I turn you know, I turn the computer back on and it's just, it, it's just a black screen. I'm like, this cannot be happening. I just got the computer back and I'm Red Dead Redemption 2 is such a badass game. I was really into it. And so, um, I'm sitting there for the rest of the night trying to figure out what, cause usually I can fix the computer. Not that I'm a computer whiz, but 
I can Google and YouTube and figure it out. I've fixed my own computer every time in the past that I've had issues because I can just Google the error messages and, you know, figure it out. And so that's what I always do. But now in this situation, the computer, which is a black screen, and then so I kept restarting it, turning it off, trying to get it past this screen. And, you know, once in a while it's doing the Lenovo screen. And I'm... It, it's not it's not that it's a Lenovo computer. It's that this company this third party seller, the reason the computer was so powerful for so cheap is because they buy the computer from Lenovo and they upgrade it themselves. I didn't realize all that. Anyways, so and apparently according to what I was reading online online, they use some not so good parts in in some situations. Although I think Anyways, so it worked. It, it it stopped working. I couldn't get it to work. I get the third party seller back on. You know, I'm trying to talk to them, and they're like, "Uh, yeah, just send it back to us again." I'm like, you know, as if it's not a big deal. I'm like, it, it, they're, they're wasting so much of my time. And the other thing is, the computer I need for the Patreon videos. Anyways, so, um, and what you know, what can you do? Like, call the cops, sue them. Like, what? There's nothing you can do. Um, it's the illusion of choice. I'm going to get into that anyway. So I send it back to him. What else am I going to actually what I, I didn't want to send it back to him. I called a local computer repair guy. He came by, picked up the computer. Uh, and I was like, bro, I'll pay you whatever. Just fix it. You know, he's like, all right. And I get a message from him later on. And he's like, it's not a software issue. He, he's like, something's wrong with the hardware. He's like, yeah. I, I don't have this stuff to fix it. He's like, I can send it to someone else, but it's going to probably cost a lot more. I'm like, just send it back to me, bro. I'll give you, I'll give you 10 bucks for just diagnosing it, you know? So he brings it back and I had to send the computer back to where I bought it. And, um, so then what happened was there, you know, a week or two goes by. I finally get a message from them and they're saying, or, I had to get on him. I, you know, I had to. The, I wasn't hearing anything back, so I messaged them like, "Yo, what the f is going on with this f***ing computer?" And they're like, "We've got to send it back to the factory, uh, and it's going to take two weeks." I'm like, "Are you f kidding me?" I'm like, "You know, this is in like mid February." I'm like, "So you're telling me that I bought this computer off you in December, and I'm not going to get it till March?" They're like, "Yeah, you know." we appreciate your patience and I'm like what the fuck what can you do you know so they um two weeks goes by and I go to message them and the mess the, the whole message system thing Amazon is telling me we're sorry we can't find that page at this point I'm slightly panicked I'm like oh shit they can just disappear like this I'm like what the fuck so I get a hold of Amazon you know, which is not an easy thing to do to get to get a person to talk to. It's all AI, all the customer service with Amazon. It's just AI telling you, just running you in circles like, oh, is this the problem? Is this the problem? Uh, back to the beginning. It You get nowhere with it. So I, go, I Googled the Amazon customer service number. I finally called them. And it, it's people in India who they're not mu much more help than the AI. I'm like, explaining the situation to them I can tell they don't even get half of what I'm saying um but anyways they messaged the third party seller which which brought the message back up to where I could see it so I was like all right that's fine let me get this fucking guy off the phone at least now I can deal with them again um and when I looked at the message he sent it's like just broken english like please contact the customer he sent computer like they don't know what they're doing it so it just annoys me that all these greedy ass corporations they're you know outsourcing everything to the third world and they're getting it's not like and i hate the argument where people are like oh well if if they didn't do that the computer would cost ten thousand dollars no it king wouldn't if a company cannot make a computer that works well at a good price Someone else, some other competitor is going to take them out of business. This this is why, ca like, capitalism works. So, 
you don't give me that bullshit that, uh, you know, if, if, if they don't outsource everything to the third world, then the computer is going to cost a million dollars because that's not the case. It, it comes down to human greed. It comes down to every company is doing it just to increase the profits. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, any company, but here's the other problem. Now, the companies who do do quality shit, since everyone is doing such shitty work all over the place, they can't afford to charge ridiculous amounts of money because there's so few of them. Uh, you know, look at like handmade stuff, for instance, um, which a lot of the time, yeah, I'm talking like handmade knives, handmade clothing, stuff like that. A lot of the times that's it, it's worth paying the extra price, for, you know, for quality made things anyways. So, um, you know, they out, they outsource everything to the point where it's, there's nothing you can do. If they sell you a defective product, it's also frustrating to deal with all the, you know, bullshit that, that they put you through. It's like, they can just get away with screwing you over or wasting so much of your time and effort and resources that by the time you get the shit straightened out, you've lost a bunch of money anyway. You know what I mean? So uh, what ended up happening was I um, I finally get a hold of them again. They're like, oh, no, we haven't heard back yet. Don't worry. We're going to send it to you. I'm like, all right, at least they're not saying, like, we never heard of you. Go fuck yourself, you know? So anyways, they, they get back to me like the next day. They're like, we're going to send it back to you tomorrow. We got it back and whatever. Anyways, so I'm like, okay, thank God. Hopefully this is over. Month there, they tell me it's supposed to get here Monday, Monday through UPS. I'm like, okay. So I don't live in the nicest neighborhood. Now, I trust my neighbors around here, but... There's some random motherfuckers walking up and down the street. You don't know. If they see a box sitting outside, they, they might just grab it. This is the type of neighborhood I'm in. So um, I got to keep an eye out. I'm staying, you know, I'm staying in a trailer behind my mechanic's shop right now. So I'm getting stuff delivered to the mechanic. The mechanic's half the time he's not here. The other half he's working on shit. And But there's other people around working on shit. So anyways, I, I, I like... If I'm getting something delivered, I like to keep an eye on it, you know, keep an eye on the front. I want to get it before anyone else can, uh, you know, not that anyway. So UPS is telling me I get an email on Monday. It's going to be there by noon. I'm like, OK, cool. I go out there around 1130. I sit out there till about 1230. Nothing. Uh, I go to track the package. They're telling me it's going to come at 430 or you know, between 12 and 4.30, I'm like, all right, so all day I'm going out there and checking, I left a note on the door, UPS come out back, there's people out back, anyways, 4.30 rolls around, there's no package, uh, so I track it again, it's telling me 7.30, I'm like, all right, I'm out there uh, between about 6.30 and about um, 8, nothing, I'm like, what the f***, it's like dark out now, now I really don't want them to just leave it out there, but it required a signature anyway, but, uh, <clears throat> so I'm like, it's eight o'clock now. They're probably not going to be delivering it today. So I've, after a, a bunch of Googling and bullshit, when you call UPS, you get some, it's a message that just runs you in circles. And I'm like, put me on with an agent. It's like, I, we can't do that for you. Thank you. Goodbye. And it's like, you're just, they're, they're basically like, yourself this ain't our problem you know anyways through enough persistence I finally get an agent on the phone and I'm still standing out front and there's other people around the shop there's you know there's another dude staying in the other trailer back here there's a couple of mechanics that work here there's people around the door's wide open it's 8 30 I'm on the phone with UPS I'm like what the hell's going on with this package and they're like uh, you know, they're trying to look into it and everything. While I'm on the phone with them, I get an email from UPS saying, we just tried to deliver it and no one's there. And I'm standing out front. There's two other dudes standing on the side. You know, there's people around all over the place. The door to the office is wide open. There's a note on the door saying, check out back. Anyways, they just, for whatever reason, they didn't even try to deliver it. But they, they sent me an email saying they did. 
I'm like, what is this bullshit? And it and it happened to happen while I was on the phone with UPS. And I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. How do you know if they actually dropped it off? She's like, well, they would have put a note on the door. I'm like, yeah. And they would have took a picture of it, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, they didn't do that. So I'm like, look, I can't just waste another day chasing this bullshit around. Tell me, give me a two hour window for tomorrow. I can't keep doing it. I got shit I got to do. She's like, all right, what time do you want it there? I said, noon. And she's like, okay. So the next day, I get an email from UPS telling me it's going to come at 3. I'm like, holy shit. Anyways, whole fucking day goes by. It doesn't come. I got to go through this bullshit trying to get them on the phone again. It takes me a long time. This time, it kept rejecting me and hanging up on me. So I went through the UPS, um, you know, where you can text back and forth with the AI. And all I kept saying was agent, 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 until finally it, it said, leave us a number, we'll call you back. I said, all right, they call me back. And while this is happening, I track the package again, and now there's no date. It says, uh, you know, uh, something happened, we'll, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. I'm like, what the f***? This is UPS, bro. And so I get her on the phone, and I'm like, what the f*** is going on? She's like, well, they tried to drop it off twice. I'm like, they didn't try to drop it off at all. I'm like, look at the records. There's no picture of any paper they left or anything. They haven't tried to drop it off. She's trying to get me to go to Largo and pick it up. I'm like, fuck all that. I'm like, you were paid to deliver this, motherfucker. You're going to deliver it. And she's like... Okay, uh, what time do you want it tomorrow? I'm like, oh, let's do this again. I'm like, noon. So I'm like, don't send me an email tomorrow. Call me. Uh, have the driver call me. Have somebody call me. I want to talk to someone tomorrow, and I want to deal with a person who can actually get something done. No, no offense to you, but you're you're in India, India or wherever you are, and there's nothing you can really do for me. So have them call me tomorrow. She's like, okay. I'm like, not an email, a call. She's like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So the next day I get an email. It's telling me it's going to be here at, um, I forget, maybe two, two thirty, three, something. Anyways, I'm like, okay. I, everyone around here knows what's going on. They've seen me ranting and raving. And so everyone's kind of looking out for the package, including the neighbors. So, um, so I go out there I put the note on the door UPS come out back I'm out back this other dude Derek's out back there's people around I'm like just come out back so I'm sitting there and uh, just looking up bullshit on YouTube and all of a sudden I get an email saying it was delivered I'm like oh shit hopefully they didn't just leave it out front I don't know what the fuck but this is like 11 a.m. at this point I'm it was supposed to come at like three. They never called me nothing. It, so thank God I come out my trailer and it's sitting right there. I talked to the mechanic and the, the the neighbor, the lady, she sells barbecue out here. She, they tried to just leave, but she stopped them. And then the mechanic came out screaming <laughs> because he knows what's been going on. And anyways, they got it for me. And so far the computer works. But my point here is it's like, if we were in a real capitalist society, all this incompetence and all this inefficiency and all this f stupidity could not exist. In a true capitalist society, it could not exist because there'd be too much competition for the business. There would, there'd be, you know, we got UPS and we got FedEx and then we got Amazon, but Amazon only deals with Amazon. And I got to say the, Am the Amazon deliveries I've had no issues with them. They they come when they say they're going to come. Amazon's pretty fucking good when it comes to the deliveries, but when it comes to the customer service and shit, not so much. But so, you know, how to let I'm guessing FedEx you're dealing with the same incompetence and stupidity. Otherwise, everyone would be using FedEx and not UPS because and when I was going online looking for the customer service numbers, there, there's a whole lot of c c people having the same issues where things aren't getting delivered. They're saying they tried to deliver it when they didn't. Um, 
you know, no one can get an agent on the phone. And I'll tell you right right now how to get an agent on the phone. When you go to track the package, it'll in the bottom right hand corner it'll say like text UPS or whatever. Do that. Tell it answer its questions or whatever. And then just keep saying agent over and over and over until eventually it's gonna it's gonna tell you to leave your number and it'll call you back. So that's how you get an actual person with UPS. Go through the little text UPS thing and after you answer its questions, you know, it's gonna run you around in circles for a little while, but after that, just keep saying agent and eventually it's gonna give you a number or it, it, it's gonna offer to call you back. So that's how you do it. But still, you're, you're talking to someone who, uh, I've gotta say, the, the girl was, you know, she wasn't dumb, and she she w- was following what I was saying, but she was not in America. But she was good. I can't complain about her because she was very helpful, and she was like, I, c- I could hear her on the other end of the phone, like, wow, really? <laughs> like, she was like, why would they do all this? <laughs> like, she was as surprised as I was, you know? But, uh, and she was, she was actually pretty helpful, I gotta say. But it's, you know... My point here is this illusion of choice where, you know, like, no one realizes everything is literally monopolized. It's just that, like, they throw up two little puppet systems where, oh, you can pick one or the other. And it's like, how do you compete with UPS? You need to be, like, a billionaire to start a company like that. So they don't have to worry about competition because their competition their competition is just as incompetent as they are. It's like... You can deal with these fucking idiots or you can deal with those fucking idiots. Either way, you, shit, you know, when it goes right, it goes right. But when it goes wrong, it, it, there's not a whole lot you can do. Now, in a real capitalist society, you could just go to the, you know, other competitors. You know what I'm saying? Now, another example is the New York City subway. It is the most inefficient, sloppy, sloppily ran pile of shit company you could imagine. I, I, it, even when I had money, I would hop the turnstile a lot of the time until finally they kept arresting me for it. I was like, I gotta play along. But, uh, it depends on what part of the city you're in. If I was in the Bronx, I could always get one of these little slick ass kids to, um, they, them little kids in the Bronx got every hustle now, Pat. They, they can, um, they, they, they do something to the Metro card to where, They'll swipe you up on, and it ain't gonna cost you nothing. I'll give them a buck or two for their troubles. Um, and these, you know, these kids are—you get to know them after a while. So there was times when I didn't have one. I'd be like, you know, bro, hook me up today, and I'll get you later. They'd be like, nah, don't, you know, don't sweat it. And they, you know, they'd swipe me off for free a lot of the time. But if I'm in a part of this city, like down around the financial district, where they don't got the little slick hustlers you know, hacking the Metro cards, I'll just stand at the gate and everyone come, you know, coming out of the train, I'll be like, yo, let me get a swipe, let me get a swipe, let me get a swipe. Eventually, someone give you a swipe. So, and I always do it too. If I got an unlimited Metro card, you pay like 30 bucks, you ride the subway all month. When I had it, I was coming off the train, somebody's asking for a swipe, I always do it for them. So, this is how you get around paying for the train in New York. Uh, one time, one time, this this was kind of cool. I was in the financial district, and there's a cop at the station. I'm like, fuck, I can't ask for a swipe. So I went up to the cop. I'm like, yo, are you gonna arrest me if I ask for a swipe? Because I gotta get back to the Bronx. Or no, I was like, cause I gotta get on the train. He goes, where are you trying to go? I was like, I'm trying to go home to the Bronx. And he goes, I'll swipe you. <laughs> I was like, all right, thanks, you know. Because it's illegal to stand there asking for a swipe, but the cop hooked me up and got me on the train that day. So I do I do complain about the cops sometimes, but I got to say, New York City cops are probably the least asshole-ish cops that I've dealt with. It they're willing to help you occasionally. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to get into my cop stories, but I got a few of them. But so the MTA is just another perfect example of this bullshit monopoly where you have to deal with this shitty it's like socialism it's like we're we're in like socialism disguised as capitalism I, you know 
I, I, I'm not some investigator and shit. I can't figure it all out. But I feel like most of these big billion dollar companies are basically just part of the government. And, you know, it's all just, it's the same. It's the same as being in a socialist society where the government controls everything. Nothing runs right. There's no competition. No one can complain or do anything because, you know, in, in my opinion, in my opinion, this society that we're in is socialism and disguised as capitalism. You've got two choices. Everything's like two choices. Um, although the subway, you got one fucking choice just right in your face. They're like, this is the only way to get around, and that's that. It's going to run like shit. It's going to be filthy. There's going to be people down there down there trying to kill you, deal with it, <laughs> because you ain't got no choice, um, but so, you know, like, you got UPS and FedEx, there's one illusion of choice, you got Democrats and Republicans, there's another illusion of choice, they're on the same team, it's all, they're all part of the same crooked-ass government, it, 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 it's, it's a big show, you got Coke and Pepsi, I don't drink either, I drink Snapple, um, well, there's an example where there is actually some competition, you, you know. Well, they can't force soda down everyone's throat, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it is. It's an illusion of choice. It's like Coke and Pepsi. Like, if I got to drink one, it's going to be Coke, Pepsi. But I don't drink. Yeah, I drink Snapple. Snapple's actually, like, good. It's not just because I'm from New York. It's, I like Snapple. I think Snapple's the only... You buy that Lipton tea, it's all high fructose corn syrup and bullshit. Snapple uses real sugar, and it's the healthier option of everything you can uh, drink out there. <clears throat> but anyways, I guess that's the end of this random raven. Sooner or later, I guess I'll make the video about the computer and just show y'all the incompetence. Although I'm not sure if there's any point in that since I just explained the whole thing in this video. But I'm telling you, if you're going to buy something expensive off of Amazon, be very careful. I'm telling you, dude. So here's what you do. Now, if you're going to buy a laptop, you got to go down past the description and see which third-party seller is selling it. It's on it, It's on the page. You'll find it if you look for it. You, you can look at the third-party seller's rating, although I got to say, I looked this seller up on Amazon and they've got like three and a half four stars I'm like how is that possible possible because when you look at the reviews more than half of them are people with experiences like I had where, where you know they bought a, a, a broken computer and some of them had to spend hundreds of dollars to go get it fixed because it it, it happened to let last over a year so the warranty was up so be very careful if you're going to buy a laptop off of Amazon. My advice, if you're going to buy a laptop from, do, you, do your research, figure out the computer you want, go to the manufacturer's website and buy it straight from them because they, the warranties are legit with them. They're not, you know, they're not upgrade. If they upgrade it, it's still under warranty. When the third party upgrades it, the computer's been opened and tampered with, the warranty's up. But, the, you know, my fortunately, my third party did have a warranty. And I've got to say, so far the computer's working. We'll see what happens. I just don't really trust the whole thing now. But I think what went wrong was I think the um, internal hard drive must have busted or something. Because um, they sent it back to me with a better internal hard drive. Like, uh, um a name brand one. I forget what it's called, but it's a pretty good one. I was looking it up on the reviews. But so, be real careful buying anything anything off of Amazon that's worth over a thousand bucks or so because the way the customer service works and all this shit, they can just run you in so many circles that, that you get to the point where you... I swear, I was considering just abandoning this whole fucking thing and just sticking with my old computer for now. This is how frustrating it's all been, you know, to where I'm like, I'll just buy a fucking computer in a couple of months or something. I, I don't want to deal with this shit no more. It's like they run you in so many circles, and, and it's all so frustrating, and everyone's so confused, and no one can really help. You get to a point where you're like, is this even worth a thousand bucks to spend 
a month, two months, running around in circles with AI and, you know, dealing with people on the other side of the world who don't know what the hell is going on, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, this video is a lot longer than I wanted, wanted it to be, so let me get off of here. I'm going to go work on my Patreon video right now. Now, um, I guess I'm just going to stick with the raw books I'm playing. I, I really can't decide the Patreon situation, which I'm terrible at making decisions, especially, especially when, it, when it comes to something where it, it's two things I want to do. But anyways, we'll talk about it on Patreon. Um, appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for the subs, the likes, the comments, uh, the tips. Oh, people... It's, like, sometimes people will send me a tip on um, PayPal, and, and they try to say something. Here's the thing. With PayPal, I can only read down about three lines. It, when I go to read the rest of the message, PayPal says, you can't message this user. I'm like, I'm not trying to fucking message them. I'm trying to read what they said. So, you know, my email is in my description of my YouTube page. So if you, you really got something to say to me, do it through the email because PayPal I can only see a couple of lines of what you're saying you know what I'm saying so if you really you know if you or inbox me on Instagram or or Facebook or whatever um, but PayPal is not the it only shows me a couple of lines of what you're saying you know so anyways appreciate every single one is I'm gonna watch this video see if it makes sense and I'll see you uh, probably either over the weekend or early in the week. Um, and yeah, I got to get a, a new stand up in my shorts. I got to get working on that too. Anyways, appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you on the next one.